Section 15.5, Calculating Equilibrium Constants. The best way to do this section, or to teach this section, is to do a problem for you. And I'm going to introduce a very useful uh, chemical trick called an ice table. And um, I remember hating, hating, hating ice tables when I first learned them. But now I can't think of not doing it because it's the easiest way to do it. I think I just prejudiced myself against it, and I decided I didn't like it, and I didn't want to do it, and hated it, hated everybody's guts, and so I didn't do it. And then I suffered for it. So please learn this. Thank you. Okay, so we've got a closed system. So remember, we want a closed system because if anything escapes, then it can't go back and do a reverse reaction. That's why it's closed. And they're going to give us an initial concentration of hydrogen. So we've got a hydrogen gas, an iodine gas, yielding hydroiodic acid. Okay, so they give us an initial concentration of the hydrogen, an initial concentration of the iodine, and then they give us the uh, concentration at equilibrium of the, of the hydroiodic acid. So I have the initial, um, I have the initial concentration here, I have the initial concentration here, and I have the equilibrium concentration here. Well, I want to know the equilibrium constant, which means I need to know all the concentrations of all of them at equilibrium. But I'm not given it. I have to figure it out. And so I'm going to use the balanced equation to do it. Just going to do a little bit of stoichiometry, uh, and then we're going to use a nice table, and I'll show you in the next slide. The reason it's called an ice table is because I've got three columns. The initial concentration, that's the I of ice. The change in equilibrium, or the change in concentration, I mean, that's the C. And then the concentration at equilibrium, that's the E. So what we're going to do is, what do we know? We write down first. So I'm given the concentration, uh, first concentration of the hydrogen. I'm given the concentration, initial concentration of the iodine. And I'm given the initial or the con the final concentration or the equilibrium concentration of the product. So if you remember the equilibrium, the K sub C is what we're trying to find. Well, the K sub C is going to be the products. That's here, which is the concentration of HI raised to the second power because there's a coefficient, and that's what this is. The concentration of HI raised to the second power divided by the concentration of H uh, or hydrogen gas raised to the first power times iodine gas raised to the first power. So I can already insert the first number. I can insert 1.8 times 10 to the negative 3. Now remember I have to square it, um, but that's the equilibrium concentration. As soon as I get all three equilibrium concentrations, I know my K sub C. Okay, so that's that. Now I just need to know the change of the, what I know. I know that I didn't have any at the beginning. I only had it at the end because there's none at the beginning. I just have reactants. That means that I have a zero, I have a zero molar uh, product because I didn't start with products. I started with reactants, so I start with zero. That means I want to go from how far away is zero from 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3. Well, it's 1.87 times 10 to the negative 3 because it's that far away from 0 to the equilibrium change. And this is the same change that all of them are going to undergo. The problem is, is that I have to go through the balanced equation. It has, to be, it has to be a stoichiometric equivalent, not simply the change in this. See, there's two moles of hydroiodic acid, and it's changing by this much. That means it's not going to change this much if there's only one mole of iodine or one mole of hydrogen. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have to be able to, uh, to do a tiny bit of sto stoichiometry, and it's not terrible. Uh, I think even you could do it. So let me get some paper. I'll put it up here. Let me first uh, put the balanced equation since we're going to refer to it. So I've got H2, or H2 plus I2 yields 2 moles of HI. Now, we were given a concentration, 1.87 times 10 to the minus 3, and this is a concentration, this is a molarity. The molarity is moles of the HI over the liters of the HI, so that's what we're given. 
Now we want to get rid of HI and go to what we are going to. So let's let's we need to do both. So let's do the hydrogen first. Okay, so um, in two moles of HI, so I'll put that on the bottom of two moles of HI, I've got one mole of H2. Okay, so when I do the cancellations, I get point zero or no, I have zero point nine three five times ten to the negative three, and this is the new concentration. So this is the moles of H two over liters. Okay, and that's what we'll that's the number we'll put in the ice table under hydrogen. Let's do the same thing for the next one. We have one point eight seven times ten to the negative three moles of our stuff over liters and it's two to one also okay so it's one mole of i2 over two moles of hi and that is going to be the same it's going to be 0 0.935 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of i2 over liters okay So ta-da, why is there a negative there? There is a positive on this side because that's on the products. It's being produced. So I changed by making more of it. Okay, so that has to be a positive number. What did I do here? I had an initial concentration here and it's going away because this stuff is being used up as I'm making the hydroidic acid. That means that the change on the left has to be negative. Please don't forget that. Change on the left is always negative. The change on the right is always positive. So this happens to be the same number, negative 9.35 times 10 to the fourth, and again and again, okay? Now I still on the bottom can't fill anything in yet because I don't have its equilibrium yet, but all I have to do is subtract it from the initial concentration and I'll have it. So when I do the subtraction, let's take the hydrogen first. 1 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 9.35 times 10 to the negative 4 yields 6.5 times 10 to the negative 5. So I put that here. That's my uh, concentration of the H2. I'm going to do the same thing. 2 times 10 to the negative 3 minus 9.35 times 10 to the negative 4 yields 1.065 times 10 to the negative 3. That's the concentration of the I. Now I have the concentrations at equilibrium of all three of them. And when I do do the division, multi multiplication and division, I get a K sub C of 51. So if K sub C of 51, what does that say? It's, it's bigger than one, okay? So there's more products, but it's not hugely bigger. It's not millions. It's only 51. That means pretty close to the same number of products as reactants. There's a little more products than reactants, uh, not a whole lot. So it's more of a 50-50 mix. You're going to get 50% or a little more than 50% hydroic acid plus 50% or a little less than 50% of the hydrogen and the iodine. So very useful. You may have to look at this video over and over again, but extremely useful in getting a lot done.